People who visit Myanmar usually start in Yangon and then travel on to Bagan, Mandalay and finally to the popular Inlay Lake. In our opinion, Inlay Lake is one of the most authentic places you can visit in Asia. Join us in this still serene landscape. Right now on the, on the Inlay Lake, in a long tail boat, it makes a lot of noise, but the sun is shining and so are we. This gigantic 22 kilometers long and at some places 11 kilometers wide lake, located between the mountains, is surprisingly shallow, with depths averaging about 2 meters in the dry season and increasing by about one half meter during the wet season. Getting out onto the water is naturally the best way to experience Inlay Lake. In some parts the water is dense with water hyacinths. Hit these channels and you will feel like you are one of the few on the lake. Many trips start at dawn and slender wooden canoes fitted with long-tailed outboard motors. You sail to pagodas, monasteries, villages or the famous floating gardens. Life of the Inta people is attuned to the Inlay Lake. Inta means sons of the lake. The Inta people live in wooden and bamboo houses on stilts and have canals instead of streets, build entire pagodas on the water, and grow vegetables on their floating farms and gardens. The stills provide enough clearance to deal with rising water levels during the wet season. We saw all kinds of fishermen busy catching fish. The Inta fishermen are famous for their unique technique of leg rowing their boats with one leg, while standing at the tip of the boat's bow on the other leg. It's an unusual but highly practical boat rowing method on the lake, where visibility is greatly limited by high reeds and water vegetation. To fish, the fishermen carry large conical nets supported by a bamboo framework for trapping fish. And these are understandably much easier to manage when both hands are free. The fishermen will first submerge the nets and then hold them down against the lake bed with their feet, thus trapping any fish. Once the net is in place and the fish are trapped, the fishermen then spear blindly at the fish through an opening at the top of the cone, using a long sharpened stick. This panics the fish and in attempting to escape from the jabs of the spear, they get snagged by the gills in the net. The floating gardens are anchored with long bamboo poles thrust into the lake bed, so that the floating gardens will not float away. Tomatoes are the primary crop, but they can grow an impressive range of fruits and vegetables. With constant access to nutrient-laden water 
The end result is a highly fertile floating garden that rises and falls with the changing water level of the lake, making it immune to flooding. The overall layout of the gardens is very practical, with waterways left between the floating rafts to allow the gardens to be easily assessed and tended to from boats. The five-day market moves around the towns of the region on a five-day cycle, except when there's a full moon, drawing minorities down from the hills to trade livestock and produce. The colorful tribes offer their wares here, usually in traditional clothing. This very colorful local market is worth a visit, walking through the chaos of stalls. Typical products include tools, carvings and other ornamental objects, textiles and cheroots. It's a dynamic market and the negotiations never stop. Besides the Inta, there are more minorities around the lake. Like the Kayan Lawi, usually called the long-necked women. The Kayan Lawi are also known for their weaving of colorful fabrics, performed on a backstrap loom, which is one of the most primitive types of weaving devices. The women here are really only wearing the neck coils because it's financially lucrative for them to do so. Handicraft is an important mainstay of the local economy and many beautiful wood carvings, smoking pipes, ornaments, textiles, share roots and other handmade items are created in the cottage industries to be sold at both local and tourist-oriented markets. Parasol making. Perfect handmade. Perfect, yeah, 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 yeah. Pottery. Distilling sake, rice wine. It's better. I think it's better with honey. <laughs> Rolling cigars. A type of yarn is spun from the stems of the lotus plant, used in clothes for monks. There are several silversmith workshops dotted around Inlay Lake. The girl also showed us the special silverfish ornaments that the workshop is famous for producing. These ornaments are handmade from overlapping pieces of silver, such that the male ornament can only bend from side to side and the female ornament can only bend in vertical plane, as if jumping. After winding for an hour, Along a scenic narrow canal, lined with trees and other vegetation, we reach the Shui In Tain Pagoda. Perched on a small hilltop on the western shores of the lake, and reached by a long covered walkway, lined with endless souvenir stalls, it features a thousand plus crumbling brick and stucco stupas, of which some are modern. Some have been partially or fully restored and others are still as time left them. Many plants, shrubs and trees have gained a foothold in the cracks of the brickwork of the stupas, which greatly adds to their beauty 
but also accelerates the process of decay. Sveyan Piai Monastery is an amazing 19th century red teak decorative structure with large oval windows standing on stilts, the theme of the area. It's a chance to catch so many great moments of the monks here, especially when they are reading books near those oval artistic windows. Sunlight, teak wood color, orange clothes, tranquil vibe, all together would form such a calm and perfect theme. The Pangda U Pagoda is located in the southern part of the lake. The impressive pagoda consists of beautiful golden details and is home to five golden icons of Buddha that are absolutely worth seeing. The monastery got its nickname Jumping Cat Monastery because formerly a monk had trained domestic cats living at the monastery to leap through small hoops for tourists. However, the monk who trained the cats eventually passed away and the practice also ceased. Nowadays, the next generation of cats lazily sleep all day long in the dimly lit meditation hall of the monastery. Takhaun Pagoda is situated in the village of Sagar, in the southern part of Inlay Lake. A dome-shaped pagoda rising up to 46 meters. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and watch the next video. Dream, explore and, and travel, travel with, with us. us.